All right, friends, um, we are gonna read the smallest book in the smallest grade. The smallest girl in the smallest grade. Um, Mrs. Harvey recommended this book. She actually gave me this book. So Mrs. Harvey recommended this book and I thought, well, let me read it to all of you. If I can open it. This is written by Justin Roberts and is illustrated by Christian Robinson. Hardly anyone noticed young, young Sally McCabe. She was the smallest girl in the smallest grade. How cute she is at that tit at that desk. Sure, her mama could be heard in the daily roll. I'm having a hard time reading these words. Sure, her name could be heard in the daily roll call. And she marched with her books down the same school hall. But hardly anyone noticed young Sally McCabe. And they certainly didn't know, or at least didn't mention, that Sally was paying super extra special attention. to the abandoned kite with a tangled string, to the 27 keys on the janitor's rings, to the leaves as they turned green to gold in the fall, to the time Tommy Torino was tripped in the hall. Look, it's like Mr. Doug's keys right there. She watched as the wildflowers tipped toward the light and heard the howl of a hound dog late one night. She was there when the stray cats who normally fought conducted a meeting in the church parking lot. She saw Kevin McEwen get pushed off a slide and that and the oncoming tears that he wanted to hide. Oh, poor Kevin. And she'll never forget that parent-teacher day when Billy's much larger father suddenly dragged him away. But through all the mean words and all the cold stares, no one even noticed that Sally was there. And they certainly didn't know, or at least didn't mention, that Sally was paying super extra special attention. She'd seen how a whisper could make someone cower, like a bulldozer cruise crushing through fields of wild flowers, and it kept piling up this discarded debris, those beautiful kites tangled in trees. So on February 3rd at 1129, Sally stepped straight out of the lunchroom line. She said, I'm tired of seeing this terrible stuff. Stop hurting each other. This is enough. Now, a few laughed out loud or didn't care that there was some girl with her hand in the air. But then something super extra special happened that day as Howard O. Henry suddenly set down his tray. Like waves rolling in, one after another, first Molly rose up, then Michael's twin brother. It was Tyrone and Terrence, then Amanda and Paul, who pushed out their chairs and stretched their arms tall. From the friendly lunch lady with the dishes she carted, to that new third grade teacher who had only recently started. Yes, everyone there, even Principal Claire, had joined little Sally with their fingers in the air. when Mrs. Harvey was telling me about this book, she did that too. She was doing it to tell me about what was happening. And though hound dogs were destined to howl at night and most stray cat meetings would end up as fights and kites would continue to get stuck in trees, 
they all felt for a moment like the janitor's keys fastened together with a heavy steel ring that held all the secrets to unlock everything. As the world returned to the way that it was, Sally noticed the difference as she usually does when Billy paused briefly to open the door for Mrs. O'Connell and 17 more. Or when Molly scooched over to make some space on the coral rise on the coral riser for Ellen and Grace. These moments that often get taken for granted, a wildflower peering that no one had planted. It's kind of what we're talking about with our kindness pumpkins for kindness club, right? What acts we can do to be kind in our school. The swing soon resumed with rhythm and sway and day turned to night and night turned to day. People remembered and would quite often mention that Sally had been paying super extra special attention and how the world could transform and a change could be made by the smallest girl in the smallest grade. So I hope you like this new book that Mrs. Harvey recommended for us. Oh, look, this is cute. On the very back page, they're flying a kite together. And I hope this also reminds you that you don't need to be an adult to make a difference. And you don't need to be an adult to change things. That any one of us at our school could make MES a better place or a kinder place. So I will have this in my office. office. If you'd like to read it, you can come borrow it from me. Hope you're having a good break and we'll see you on Monday.